Hey, sis, are you there? I heard something was going on with you, but I'm glad that everything seems to have settled down now. I always knew that you were so nice, but I can't believe that you put yourself through all of that just for me. You really are too kind, do you know that? Tracy, I really wasn't doing what I did for your sake, you know. I broke off my engagement with my fiancé because I caught you two having an affair with each other. Well, I know, but you were engaged to a CEO. You know that it's always been my dream to marry a rich man, right? I don't even know what to say to something like that. Is that supposed to be an excuse? Well, I've just always wanted to live like a spoiled princess, you know? I really don't know. What in the world does that even mean in this day and age? Besides, where did a dream like this even come from? It isn't like we were horribly poor or fantastically rich growing up. Well, I know, but that doesn't mean that I can't want to marry someone who is really rich. Because if I did that, then I would never have to work another day in my life. And now I found that man after all this time. It really is like a real-life Cinderella story, isn't it? I don't remember the scene in Cinderella where one of the ugly sisters steals her prince away. Are you sure we were watching the same movie growing up? Oh, come on. You can't actually be mad at me for taking him for myself, right? Don't you know that all's fair in love and war? You just gotta get over this. You think this is something someone can just get over? This isn't a toy or something that you stole from me this time. We aren't kids anymore. You're right, we're adults, and I think that you're forgetting your place right now. I stole your fiancé from you, and that's a fact. You just need to accept the fact that you've been dumped for the better woman. You think I've been dumped? Please, I wouldn't have taken Jerome back if he came begging for me to take him back. <laughs> I wonder if you have any idea just how pathetic and desperate you sound. I really don't care what you have to say about this anymore. I am through with the both of you. You really don't get it. You aren't the one calling the shots here. Jerome left you for me. Do you understand that? And it's because you weren't enough for him. He chose me over you because it's clear that I'm the better choice. And that's why we had an affair behind your back. Because you couldn't make your fiancé happy and now he's left you. I really don't care how you try and frame it. It is true that Jerome cheated on me, and that's why we're not getting married. But do you see me crying and moaning over losing him? Whatever, I just know that you've gotten better at hiding it now. But you've always been a little crybaby ever since we were little. Now who's the one trying to act all tough? We both know that you were the one who would resort to tears right away. You're just trying to project your feelings onto me, but it's not going to work. You think that I'm crying over getting your fiancé? As if. I think it's hilarious. I couldn't be happier about this. You have no idea how long it's been my dream to marry someone like a CEO and never have to work again. It's like my whole life has been leading to this moment. You really have no idea what you're talking about, do you? But whatever. What's done is done. Oh, come on! You can't just be taking it that easy. Can't you send me a message in all caps or shout at me over the phone or something at least? I'm not going to do that, but you should know that Jerome is not a CEO. What in the world are you talking about? Of course he's a CEO. He's the boss of the company that you work for, isn't that right? Actually, we have joint management of the company, if you must know. Hold on a second, what is that supposed to mean? How can you both manage the company? Well, I actually started the company with my startup capital. Jerome just snuck his way up the ranks using connections of his. The company is, however, all mine. This doesn't make any sense to me at all. What in the world are you talking about? I mean that when we first met while working for different companies, I had just established mine, and as it grew, Jerome showed interest in helping out. Then we started to talk about getting married. After I got pregnant, the board insisted that I have a co-manager in case anything happened to me, and they selected Jerome. So then, you two had the same job at the same time, but the company was really yours? But then, I don't get it. Are you telling me that you're also the CEO of a company? 
I would say I'm more CEO than Jerome. After all, it was my money that began the company. And I'd double check about Jerome still being a CEO since he would have been fired by now. Fired? What do you mean by that? I mean that once the board found out that Jerome was cheating on me, they asked him to step down and began a full investigation into him. It turns out that he was using company money to take you out for meals and on dates. So the board had more than enough evidence to fire Jerome right then and there. In fact, I believe all of this happened last week. Last week? Are you sure? He hasn't told me anything about any of this. Well, you might want to go and try talking to him about some of this in that case. But then, doesn't this mean that Jerome isn't even a CEO and that I won't actually be marrying a really rich guy? That's what you're worried about? I tell you that Jerome was embezzling from the company, something he could go to jail for, and that's all you care about? You're just lucky the board already agreed not to press charges as long as Jerome pays the money back. Of course, we are prepared to press charges if that doesn't happen. But I was supposed to live life like a princess. I thought I had stolen your man away from you with my charm and good looks. But now you're telling me that the man I stole from you doesn't even have a job? Yeah, and I don't imagine he has much in the way of savings given how lavishly Jerome likes to live. But... Why didn't you say anything about this to me sooner? You should have warned me about him. Ugh, I never want to talk to you again. Are you really saying that to me? Oh, that message isn't showing up as red. Well, okay then. Have a nice life, sis. Hey, Mabel, are you there? What the heck is the matter with you, huh? Why the heck did you have to go and tell your sister that I wasn't the CEO of our company anymore, huh? First of all, it isn't our company. It's always been my company. Second of all, don't be upset just because I told my sister the truth. Not only about your job, but also all about how you were fired. After all, it's not like I ever promised that I wouldn't tell her. You little... <sighs> Don't you realize what you've done? Now she doesn't want to marry me anymore! You've messed up my whole life with this! Oh, so you mean you've managed to fumble marrying two women now? You've really got to work on that, Jerome. You would like to think so, wouldn't you? But it shows what you know. And just what is that even supposed to mean, huh? I mean that I wanted to see how you would react. The truth is that I talked to your sister and smoothed things out. So we're still going to be getting married. And just what kind of lies did you have to tell her to get her to go along with that? I told her that the reason I chose to step down from my position as CEO of our company is so that I can do and start my own company. And I've already been preparing for this for a long, long time. After all, I was the one who took our company to where it is today. I know all about how to raise a successful company from the ground up now. You're really going to start a company all by yourself? What? <laughs> like it's hard? I'm going to start a company, and it's going to grow far beyond what you could ever imagine. I'll dominate the industry and become untouchable. Well, you might know how to found a company, but that doesn't mean that you're any good as a manager. And I don't think you've ever shown any promise there anyways. Are you kidding me? You're just jealous because I left you and our company to go start my own with my new woman. You can't actually think that I'm jealous of either you or my sister, right? You realize how stupid you sound, don't you? Whatever. You're the one who doesn't know what you're talking about. Tracy and I are going to live happily ever after while your company just crumbles without me. Just stay out of my way and never try to interfere with my life again. 
I really don't care what you and my sister choose to do with your lives, but you do realize that you need capital to start a business, right? Do you have that kind of money? Because I know that you know that you still owe me for the legal fees from your affair. You think a genius like me needs to waste my brain power on small details like that? I have big plans, and when I tell them to the bank, they're going to have to give me my loan. And I'll get the loan and start my company and have everything up and running in six months. Six months, huh? You really think you can handle doing all that in such little time? Well, in that case, I want you to pay me what you owe me right now. This is why you always used to get on my nerves. The second you saw that I was going anywhere in life, you would always find a way to try and hold me back. Why can't you just be more like your sister and let me do whatever I want without making little comments on it? If you've got a problem with constructive criticism now, just wait until you're in a boardroom meeting. Besides, you knew that I was like this when we first started dating. Did you really expect me to change? You know, I never even wanted to be engaged to you. But I knew that it was the only way to hold on to my position and my power. But then I met your sister. And I realized I didn't have to sell my soul to live like this. What your sister and I have is true love and it's going to give us the success we need. Well, I really do hate to stomp on your dreams, but let's just hope that it's true love that you two have. Of course it is! We've tied together and nothing is ever going to come between us. Hmm, well, good luck with that. I just hope that you two can stay together long enough to be married. You'll see. We'll prove you wrong! We'll prove everyone wrong. And then you'll realize that you should have never underestimated me. Just now that I'm never going to work with your company again. So when I'm dominating the industry, you'll have to struggle just to keep the lights on. Well, you have to have found your own company and get it off the ground first. So good luck with that. And do hurry up and send me the money that you owe me, okay? Oh, you'll just have to wait for that. But don't worry. Once I have all my success, I'll be sure to pay you back that money with interest. And then you'll realize that that's only a taste of the wealth I'll have. Then you'll see how wrong you were about me. Hey there, Mabel. I just thought you should know Jerome and I moved in together. At first, I was worried about all the things you were telling me about him, like how he wasn't a real CEO or how he embezzled from the company. But then he finally started his own company. And now we've moved into an amazing condo, and we're the happiest that we've ever been. It's amazing. You moved into a condo together with Jerome because I haven't even heard anything about him creating a new company. Well, I suppose that's probably because Jerome just runs in different circles from you, doesn't he? This is where we're going to move into. He told me that he already paid for the condo and that they're just getting it ready for us. Oh, wait a second. I think I recognize that view. Isn't that Mammoth Towers? You mean even you've heard of this amazing luxury condo building? Yeah, I have, actually. Do you know what room you're going to be living in? And just why would I share that with you? Don't tell me that you're going to try to break in and try to steal Jerome away from me. Because you should know that the building has guards in it and someone like you won't be allowed in. Right. Well, in that case, I guess you shouldn't worry about telling me the room number. Ugh, whatever. If you must know, the room number is 2305. So you're on the 23rd floor, then. That's right! We're almost at the very top of the building. I've never gotten to stay in a place so nice. We're finally going to have our happily ever after. 
Well, it's just kind of funny because that's my unit. Wait, what? What in the world are you talking about? Do you really think I'm going to buy a lie like that? You have to come up with something better. I'm not kidding you at all. I own unit number 2305 in Mammoth Towers. Oh, just stop it already. Jerome sent me that photo from his phone. He was inside the unit and everything. There's no way that you own the building that we're about to move into. That doesn't make any sense at all. Well, yes, I'll say the interior does look like it's changed a lot. Although you should know that I got that unit because we bought it from Jerome's parents. But the building was under his dad's name for a while. Well, now you're not making any sense at all. How could it be your unit if it's under Jerome's dad's name? Okay, I guess I'll have to explain the whole thing then. So, that building was finished about a year ago. Around then, Jerome's dad thought to invest in the building company, thinking he would see some big returns. He bought a unit, hoping to make a quick buck flipping it, but he wasn't able to pay for the whole thing. So then he came to me and asked me to buy it. So then, you're telling me that you bought this unit from Jerome's dad who couldn't afford to get one himself? Pretty much, yeah. But... Now that I look at this photo, I can see that this is from when Jerome's dad still took care of the place. And that's why it's so different from how I have the unit looking now. But this can't be right. I mean, Jerome said that he and I would be moving in there. I already have my bags packed and everything. Well, I don't know what to tell you, except that it's not Jerome's place to choose what to do with it. How could you do this to us? What's the matter with you? I didn't do anything. In fact, you were the one who said that you never wanted to talk to me again. So how is this all coming back on to me? Because we're supposed to go and live in that big condo building. We were supposed to have our happily ever after there. Why do you always have to ruin things for me, Mabel? You're the worst sister ever. Look, I know this is probably a lot for you to take right now, but you can't blame this on me. But it's not just now. You've always stolen everything I wanted from me, even when we were little. I didn't steal anything from you. In fact, you would always take from me. Whenever I tried to get it back, you would instantly start crying to get mom and dad on your side. But it's not fair. I want to live in that big condo. It should be all mine. Well, it was never yours nor Jerome's to begin with. A while ago, Jerome's dad needed money right away and offered to sell me the condo for the price he had put into it. I bought it and have been living there for a while. That's how I know that the interior looks different now. I don't know why Jerome thinks you two are moving in, but it's just not going to happen. If anything, I think that this is just one small part of a much larger lie that he's telling you. But this really isn't my problem anymore. Please don't bother me with stuff like this ever again. It turns out that when it was time to move, Jerome ended up taking my sister to go and move in with his parents. Apparently, they were in serious debt, and this was part of the plan to use Jerome and Tracy to pay off their debts. Tracy was messaging me, begging to help get her out of there, but I just read her texts and then blocked her number. She tried living with them for a couple of months, just hoping that this was all part of Jerome's plan to start his own company. Of course, he had never really even begun the process and was lying to Tracy this whole time about his intentions. I heard later from my parents that they ended up bailing out Tracy and rescuing her from her in-law's house. Now, both my mom and dad are keeping a very close eye on Tracy and making sure she finds a job and learns some responsibility. As for me, life went on as normal. Nothing Jerome or Tracy did really ever had a chance to affect me. I told my parents that I wouldn't be doing anything to support my sister and they understood and agreed with me. Robert? Your little brother Winston just got accepted into med school. Oh, hey, Mom. Yeah, I just heard. Winston told me. I congratulated him. Me, Winston, and your father are going out to a luxury sushi restaurant to celebrate the good news tonight. Um... 
Obviously, you won't be joining us. All the reviews online said that this is the most luxurious restaurant in town, so it's clearly not appropriate for someone like you. You will, however, be footing the bill, so I expect you to make your way down to 5th Street the moment I message you to let you know we're done eating. When you say the most luxurious restaurant in town, do you mean sushi-licious shenanigans, by any chance? You know, the place famous for being three times as expensive as most other luxury restaurants? Of course. Unlike you, his moronic high school dropout big brother, Winston is intelligent and hardworking. He's by far mine and your father's favorite child, and we intend to reward him for his efforts. You intend to reward him? On my dime? You've got some nerve. I thought you promised to stop doing this once I agreed to cover your debt repayments. I don't see what that has to do with anything. But if you must insist on dragging it up, I think you should be grateful me and your father are granting you the privilege of repaying our debts. Think about it. Now you have a reason to drag your worthless backside out of bed in the morning and go to work. I won't be hearing another word of complaint out of you, boy. Do you hear me? If you know what's good for you, you'll keep your mouth shut and carry on working like a dog to support your beloved family. I see. Hey, B-Pro, is now a good time? Winston? Why are you messaging me we're in the same house, you big doofus? I don't want Mom and Daddy hear what I'm about to say. Really? That was dramatic. Alright, well, fine by me, I guess. Listen, Robert. I'm thinking of giving up on becoming a doctor. Whoa, where in the holy frickin' Jesus balls did that come from? Did I eat magic mushrooms without anyone telling me or something? Why would you do that when you only have a year left before you graduate med school? You're almost done paying off mom and dad's debt, right? Yeah, actually I am. I should be done with the last repayment right around the time you graduate. But why? What does that have to do with anything? It's mom and dad. They told me what their plans are after I graduate and become a doctor. They said they both plan on quitting their jobs and having me provide for them for the rest of their lives. What the heck? And that's only what was actually said to me directly. When I left the room, I overheard them planning a bunch of expensive vacations and to buy tons of crazy expensive branded goods and accessories. House extensions, exotic labradoodles, vintage whiskeys, gold-plated toilet seat, a Ferrari... You name it, Robert. They're planning on buying it all with my money. I have no idea why they think they have an infallible right to my salary, but there you go. Jesus, bro, what am I even reading? They don't seem to have any idea that it'll still be an intern for at least a few years now that I've left med school. Which means I'll be on 40k a year at best. This probably goes without saying, but... I'll be making way less than you do, right? Yeah, I guess so. Mom and Dad love to harp on about how being a high school dropout makes me a failure. But it was thanks to that I was able to start working so early. I've been at my company for 15 years now. I'm in an executive position and get an extra allowance for all the qualifications I've acquired over the years. Plus, I have the extra money I make from the side hustle I started 7 years ago. Right? That's what I thought. Exactly. That's why I'm so astonished they managed to convince themselves I'm going to be rolling in cash the second I get out of med school. Robert, listen. I want to move out of this house. Wow, are you serious? Are you really surprised? You want to leave yourself, right? They've put you through your fair share of crap too, haven't they? Not least among it, forcing you to drop out of high school so you could pay off their gambling debts. And then having the nerve to give you crap for being a high school dropout? Yeah, I guess you're right. The only reason I accepted to take over the repayments is because Uncle Joe was the one who lent him the money. Which means I never had any legal obligation to pay. That's not all. You cover my med school fees too and I know that can't have come cheap. 
It's only thanks to you I was able to get in without going into debt myself. You're the one I want to repay my debt of gratitude to, Robert, not Mom and Dad. To be honest with you, they make me sick. Being unemployed despite being fully capable of working would be bad enough on its own. But now they're demanding provide for them for the rest of their lives? What am I? Freaking walking ATM? I can't get out of this house a moment too soon. Winston. Come with me, bro. What do you say? I know this might sound weird coming from me after I relied on your money so much. But you have a right to be free of our deranged parents too. To tell you the truth, I've been thinking about it for a while. Here's how the plan looks right now. I'm thinking of quitting my job at the insurance company and going freelance once I get done with mom and dad's debt repayments. To put it simply, I'm thinking of making my side hustle my main job and focusing solely on that. I see. I guess me graduating med school ties into that too since you won't be covering my tuition fees anymore. Your outgoings are going to drop down in one full swoop so you'll be able to make things work with just one job. I like it. Yep, you pretty much nailed it. When I'm a freelancer, I'll be able to go anywhere I like since I'll be working 100% remotely. Anywhere? Basically, what that means is that no matter which hospital you end up working in, no matter which state you end up moving to, it'll always be possible for me to be close by. Oh yeah, you're right. Obviously, from my perspective, I'd appreciate it if you chose somewhere with decent internet. Haha, <laughs> gotcha, bro. We only have about a year left before this becomes a reality. Yeah. Let's make the necessary preparations. Got it. Excuse me, Robert. You have one week to get your things together and get out of this house. What the hell? Where did that come from? Your little brother's a rich doctor now, so we don't need your pathetic high school dropout salary anymore. What? What's that supposed to mean? Do I have to spell it out, Dumbo? It means Winston will be looking after me and your dad from here on out, so you're no longer necessary. Get out of our lives and never come back. Winston's going to provide for you both as a medical intern? How the hell do you expect him to do that? That's not fair, my brother. He's about to enter the workforce, and with that, one of the toughest periods of his life will begin. You expect him to take care of you guys at home as well as the mountain of work responsibilities he's inevitably going to end up with? And what do you know about anything, you pitiful high school dropout? It might seem impossible to you because you earn breadcrumbs, but unlike you, Winston's actually going to have a respectable income. He's a doctor, you moron. I quit my job because with Winston's salary, I can get by without working. Whoa, 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 say what now? You quit your job? No way. Did Dad quit too? Of course he did. We recently got word that you got done paying off the last of our debts, so what with that and Winston finally becoming a doctor, we saw no need to continue. No matter how you look at it, there's zero need for either of us to work again for the rest of our lives. Hmm. Huh. I take it your sulky tone means you understand, then? Fantastic. Now hurry up and start packing your things. Oh, one more thing. Me, Winston, and your father will all be going to the most luxurious sushi restaurant in town to celebrate him finally becoming a doctor. Make sure you come down to the restaurant to pay for our meals as soon as I message you, just like always, okay? Do I make myself clear? Are you for real? You just kicked me out of the house and ordered me to get out of your lives forever. Why would I pay for your sushi? Are you insane? Think of this as your final act of filial piety towards your parents who so very kindly raised you. It'll never make up for the monumental failure you became. But it's better than nothing. Make sure you have the money ready by tonight. Do you mind if I say one last thing? What is it? Bye-bye. I'm taking Winston with me. Huh? Winston, you all ready? Yep. 
I'm already at the station like we agreed. Did mom say anything to you about going out for sushi tonight? Sure, but I told her I can't go today because I have food poisoning. Wow, are they for real? They went to your congratulatory meal at the most expensive restaurant in town without you? No kidding. I'm not going to complain though. The rotten personalities are giving us the perfect chance to make our escape. I never thought I'd say it, but just this one time, I'm grateful they're dicks. You're right. I'm so hype, bro. I can't believe I finally get to escape their four sushi nights. About that, my buddy from the old company knows a chef at that restaurant. Apparently, he said that he feels bad for you every time you go because they order the most expensive stuff on the menu for themselves. While you just sit there eating french fries all night. Were you holding back because you knew I was always the one paying? There is that, but there is also the fact I'm just not good with raw fish. I thought you knew. What can I say? I guess I really like their french fries. Oh, I see. Anyway, I'm about to head out on the next train. Sure thing. I'll follow you in like an hour, okay? Got it. See you at the next station. Roger that. Robert! Are you there? Robert! What on earth did you just say to the chef at the sushi restaurant? He just told me you refused to pay because I said I never wanted to see you again. Yes, that's exactly what I said. Did you need some kind of explanation? I'm not sure which part is hard to understand. You pretty much just disowned me, so I'll be leaving the house now and moving a long, long way away. Accordingly, paying for your luxury sushi is going to be a little difficult this time around. Anyway, didn't I just tell you to pay for your own damn meals? How are you surprised by any of this? No, I can't. I just can't. Do you have any idea how much the bill came to? Sixteen hundred dollars! Your father and I don't have that kind of money. Yep, sixteen hundred dollars sounds about normal. That's more or less what I was paying every time. Huh? Isn't it strange? Your worthless good-for-nothing high school dropout son was able to pay every time without issue. But you and dad are struggling? Oh my god. Were you really paying this much every time? I had no idea it was so expensive. Yep. Look on the bright side. At least Winston not being with you today should bring the total down a little. This is actually on the lower end of what I paid. This is the lower end? Robert, how on earth do you have that much money? Answer me this. How long do you think it's been since I started working? What? I've been working non-stop ever since I dropped out of high school. I've had promotions, gained qualifications, undergone transfers, and had lots of other extra allowances added to my salary along the way. When Winston started med school, I started working a side job to help cover his tuition fees. You didn't think I was still making the same money as I was at the convenience store. You didn't think I was still making the same money as I was at the convenience store I worked at when I dropped out of high school, did you? Huh? Now, Winston's done with med school. I'm also done paying off yours and dad's debt, which, by the way, I had no obligation to pay off whatsoever, but did anyway out of the kindness of my heart. I don't need to make anywhere near as much money as I used to now. Which is why I decided to quit my job and focus solely on what used to be my side job as a freelancer. What's your side job? Not telling you. I don't need you showing up on my doorstep begging, thanks. Well, what about the bill for this sushi? Like I said, pay for it yourself. But uh, we don't have the money. Bye. Yo, Robert, I'm on the train right now, but I keep getting those damn messages from mom complaining about how you won't pay the sushi bill. Oh my god, is she seriously still harping on about that? I just left her on red. Nice. 
there's no need to dignify her with a response. Still, I gotta admit, I feel kind of bad for the sushi joint. I think I'm gonna ring my buddy and tell him to pass on an apology later on. Now don't sweat it. Apparently Uncle Joe plans on paying this time around. I wonder if he actually will. Don't forget he was the one who lent... Don't forget he was the one who lent mom and dad all that money back then. I wouldn't be surprised if he never wanted to give him another cent after how long it took him to get his money back. I came clean with everything this morning and finally told him it was me paying him back all along. To be honest, I'd be amazed if he dug them out of another hole after finding out they'd been lying to him for years. Jeez, bro. You sure know how to time things. Nice. Pure coincidence, I swear. Sure, we can go with that if you like. Seriously, though. I wonder how they're going to support themselves without either of us around now neither of them have jobs. Mom was 19 when they got shotgun married after falling pregnant with you, right? They've got a way to go until they get their pensions. They have no choice. They're going to have to find new jobs. No kidding. Anyway, my train will be arriving soon. Alright. I'm set on the bench at the platform. Let's head out of the station together. Yeah. How cool is this? Two brothers about to embark on their new lives in the big wide world together? I feel like an anime character. Cut it out, you weeb. You're in the real world now. You're right, though. I'm sure we're going to face tons of challenges from here on out, but there's nothing we can't overcome together. Heck yeah. When I asked Uncle Joe about what became of the sushi incident later on, he explained that by some miracle, it turned out that my dad had just enough money left in his savings account to cover it. So they were allowed to leave the restaurant without cops being called. My old work buddy heard from the chef that the two of them are now officially banned from entering the restaurant for the rest of their lives. Apparently, he almost seemed overwhelmed with joy at the fact he'd never have to tolerate them again. As for what happened to our parents after that, they totally forgot I was the one who'd been paying the rent and utilities, which meant that before long, their electricity, gas, and water ended up being totally shut off. Apparently, the landlord's currently in the process of filling out the paperwork to have them forcibly removed. And that's not all either. Being totally out of cash and being too lazy to work, they went into debt again, and this time not with Soft Touch Uncle Joe, with an underground loan shark who goes by the name of the Finger Snapper. Nobody heard from them after they got disowned by the entire family. Naturally, I have no intention of looking for them either. <laughs>